that was on the beach this morning. <laughs> you see the mountains from uh, Cuba in the background. Okay, so um, yeah. what we're going to talk about is visa previa. How many of you have diagnosed the visa previa in your life? So one out of twenty. How many of you have diagnosed at least ten visa previa? How many? Any at ten. Least one? At least one. 10 days of previa in your scanning life. Okay, one hand, Ravi, of course. Um, I've been contacted by a gentleman, Darren Samet, which is outside over here, about a year ago, a year and a half ago, about days of previa. And I, I thought, what's the deal about this? We all look for this thing. What, what, is, what is the issue? And I realized that actually not everyone was looking for that. And when I was giving a course in Brazil a couple of weeks ago, I realize that many people did not even have Doppler, call a Doppler, to look for visa previous. So well, and that, that specific case, and uh, it ended up in, in a disaster, um, was seen uh, by our group. And I am sort of uh, feeling proud that uh, we're sort of good. But we missed it, and it ended up in a disaster. Uh, and this uh, man, instead of uh, coming to shoot us, uh, he took his lawyer, he took up a, a major campaign. They created a, uh, a, a pressure group, a, 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 an organization looking at uh, Vaza Period to try to promote uh, obstetricians to have a look at this condition. Uh, he left his uh, extremely busy uh, lawyer's office last year and he joined us in Barcelona. And uh, he came with uh, little Francesca, who was the child in the next uh, pregnancy, where we did several scans to reassure them and reassure ourselves that there was no vasoprenia, and he came again. And, and I think that I take this opportunity to congratulate him uh, for trying to educate us through one of my disasters. So thank you, sir. And yeah. thank you, Philip, for bringing this topic up. Yes. So, vasoprevia previous are vessels that are crossing in close pro proximity to the inner cervical os, and since those vessels are unsupported by anything, they are more fragile. Now, don't uh, take notes or anything like this. This whole presentation is downloadable, and because I have only 25 minutes, uh, I may skip some of the slides in this. I'm just joking here. Uh, and um, VESA is, of course, something that is a vessel, and previa is in front of the way, so it's a vessel in front of the way. And it has been described a long time ago by a guy called Lapstein, a French guy, and I have been totally unable to find the reference of that. Apparently, there's a, 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 a copy of this article in uh, a British library somewhere, but that is really the only one. In the old days, the only way to discover a VESA previa was usually too late because of ruptured membrane, some vaginal bleeding without a sign of abruption, and fetal distress or even worse, fetal demise. Now the presence <coughs> of visa previa is something that is not well known. The numbers in the literature vary from 1.5 to 4 per 10,000, but I believe this is extremely underreported and underestimated. Uh, I was talking to Ravi who has seen 10 last year. I think we have seen about 10 over the past two years also. So I believe it is a lot higher than the numbers in the literature. 10% of visa previa occur in twins, so this is a high-risk population. And there, there are two main reasons why you get a visa previa. One is a velamentous insertion, and the other one is a vessel that connects the succentrated lobe to the main lobe of the placenta. And then there's a less common uh, cause in which a placenta who was marginal had vessel on the side of it, and as the vessels are regressing, the, as the placenta is moving away by trophotropism, the vessel are left in front of the, uh, the us. So let me illustrate that. We'll look at a uterus from the fundus towards the cervix. And essentially what you see in this condition is the inner us over here, external us, and the endocervical canal. And the three conditions would be a velamentous insertion, where you have a placenta which is on the back side. Here I have drawn an umbilical artery. And uh, next to it, we have an umbilical vein. Of course, there should be one more vessel, but I'm a bit lazy to draw all three of them. And here we have the membrane all around. And at this level here, we have an acute angle, which is the place where the cord gets free. So all these vessels here are tethered by the membrane. And the point of interest here is that sometimes some of those vessels are crossing right in front of the inner arse. 
Now the other mechanism by which you can get a visa preview is a multi-local center in which you have a poster lobe over here, uh, anterior lobe over there, or wherever it is, and then you have vessels that connect one to the other, and some of these vessels will cross over the uh, inner us and will be at risk of danger in case of uh, <coughs> delivery. And then the final one, which actually may be more common than I had initially thought, because when I went back to my collection of cases of farm, uh, example of that, there was a few more than, than I wanted to, to recognize in my, my collection. And here we have a placenta that is a marginal insertion, and we have vessels on the edge of the placenta, and as by mechanism of tropotrophism, the placenta is moving away from the os, the vessel may remain <coughs> where they used to be, and it therefore becomes a risk of being uh, ruptured during a delivery. So what are the risk factors, the conditions that are associated with vessel that run close to the cervix?